got two parts and I am going to bring us into the part of the power in the tongue, the power of our words and how, and how it affects not only our lives, but the lives around us. Amen. Come on. Because we have to realize as Christians that we have a responsibility to speak yeah. words Come that on. are life-giving words. Right. Yeah. Amen. And in every situation, we have to speak very carefully. Amen. Because there are life-giving words that come out. And there's also death-giving words that can come out. Amen. We're going to get into that. Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18.21 that there is death and life in your words, in your tongue. Right? So I'm going to read this scripture because we know that it says death and life in the tongue. The second part of this is very key. Yeah. And they that love it shall eat the fruit oh, thereof. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. So right here we see the tongue is very powerful. And those who love the tongue eat of its fruit. Yeah. And those who eat of its fruit are those who choose to live and die by it. Wow. Come on. It's just like if you live and die by the sword. You choose to live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Amen. Amen? If you choose to live by the law, you're going to live and die by the law. Amen. And praise God if you choose to live by faith. Amen. We get to live in faith. Huh? <laughs> Come on. There's no death where we're going. On. Only life. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father God. So we see... That speech is important. Mm -hmm. So prudent speech, prudent meaning life-giving, wise, well-judged, careful speech gives life. Mm -hmm. And wicked, excessive speech brings on death. So right here we see tongues can be a weapon of mass destruction and can cause wars. It can cause families to fail. It can cause marriages to fail. It can cause churches to fail. Come on. Yeah. It can cause many things. Your career, your hopes, your understanding, your reputation can fail from someone's words. Amen. It's hard to, to come back from words of attack on your reputation. The enemy has designed it that way. We have to be careful. We, our tongues can also bring life, though, and that's the good news. Your tongue, your words can bring life to every situation. It can be a tree of life, the Bible tells us. Hallelujah. And in Matthew 5, 9, it says that blessed are the peacemakers because there can be peace in your tongue because they are called the children of God. And if you're a child of God, you automatically have to Speak as the Creator would speak. Amen? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Because we're, we're made in His likeness. Mm -hmm. So why shouldn't we speak as He speaks? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tongues can make marriages sweet. Oh, yeah. Families strong. Yes. Churches healthy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We need healthy churches in this world. Yeah. Amen. Amen? We are the remnant. Yes. And it's our responsibility to bring life everywhere we go. Hallelujah. And how do you do that? With the word of God. Spreading the word of God. That's life bringing. The word of God. Hallelujah. So we want to think about one thing this morning. I'm just going to ask you to think about this. What will come out of your mouth today? Sword thrust or healing? Death or life? Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will depend on what's filling your heart, I can tell you that much. That's right. That's right. It depends on what you're feeding yourself. Mm. If you feed yourself the word of God, Amen. you're automatically going to be giving strings of life everywhere you go. Amen. Strings of life. Yes. Because a critical heart will bring a critical tongue. A self-righteous heart will bring a judgmental tongue. Hmm. A 
bitter heart will produce a very hurtful tongue, a complaining tongue. But a loving heart will produce a gracious tongue. And, and a, a faithful heart will produce a tongue that is truthful. A peaceful heart will produce a reconciling tongue. Hallelujah. So when we fill our, our heart with the grace of God, and we soak in the word of God, think about this. Soak in different parts of the Bible. There's so many things that we can saturate ourselves in here that are life-giving. Come on. We have the Beatitudes in Matthew 5. Soak in them. Yeah. Blessed are they. Blessed are. I mean, come on. It yeah. tells you over and over again. Blessed if you. Mm. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Soak in the perfect will of God in Romans 12. Soak in no, love never fails in 1 Corinthians 13. Paul tells us. Soak in the being of one accord and of one mind in Philippians 2. And you soak in those things. What do you think is going to happen? Automatically, you're going to want to share those things. Because they're in your heart. So right there, we see what's in your heart. You soak in the things of the Lord. It'll come out beautiful, flourishing, growing, productive. Hallelujah. We are bombarded by the sin of this world every single day. And it's so important that we take the time to wash our minds with the word. Wash your mind with the word. We got to remember as we're washing our mind and reading the word that God will reveal to us his word. The revealed word of God, the rhema word of God. That's the spirit of the Lord. That's the spirit of God. God's spirit etched on your heart. It's revealed and it's there forever. Why does he put it there? So that you can share it. So that you're safe. Amen. Because he knows if it's here, it's eventually going to come out here. Come on. Hallelujah. Cleanse us, Father God. Wash us in your word. Protect us, Father. The revealed word of God. Because the spirit of God lives inside of us. The spirit of God lives in each one of us. Hallelujah. And, it, and when the spirit lives in you, you are powerful. You are powerful. What makes the enemy so scared? Of a powerful Christian. Because he knows. What you're going to do to him. He knows what you're going to do to him. If you're not getting attacked. You ain't doing nothing for God. Come on. It doesn't mean that we have to accept the attack. Because get thee behind me Satan. I rebuke thee in Jesus name. You can attack all you want. But my God is my captain. And he will go before me. Angel armies will be sent out and you are defeated. Come on, shout hallelujah. That's it right there. You can get attacked, but it doesn't mean you have to get beat down. You can stand on his forehead, bruise him, beat him. He's just a little tiny thing anyway. Come on. Hallelujah. You are a child of God made in his image. He lives inside of you. That means you are powerful. You wield the sword of the spirit, which is much more powerful than any devil in hell can wield. Jesus. You have been given power to trample over what? Serpents and scorpions. Ah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. I'm telling you what, this is good right here. This is life-giving, changing, because it will change your atmosphere when you start doing this. When you decree and you declare the things of God over your life, it will change everything in your life. Come on. If you're believing for God, I don't want to jump there. Hold on one second. Because I want to say this. We have to make sure that we're speaking as the creator speaks. Yes. Come, on. Yes. Come on. 
come on. We have to speak as he would speak. That is his desire for us. We are to emulate him. Because we are made in his image. Hallelujah. Jesus, speak life. In this psalm right here, 141 verse 3. It says, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Oh, my goodness. And keep watch over the door of my lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right there. Hallelujah. That's it. Set a guard over my mouth and watch over that door. Don't let it open up. Not if it's not going to bring life. Keep it shut, God. Yes, Lord. There's a thing called being slow to speak. Hallelujah. And it's powerful by itself. Your kid could be in trouble with you and you don't have to say a word. They know they're still in trouble. <laughs> but if you're believing for God to change your circumstances, to change your finances, you're believing for a, a new job and you decree and declare that new job is happening. It's going to come to me and God, I know you're going to bring it to me. Don't make a mistake because it just didn't happen today. That you start going, well, maybe that job's not going to come. You know, maybe it wasn't meant to be. Because, you know, God's working behind the scenes. And he's going to test your faith. And he's going to want to see that you're going to stand fast. And you're going to believe. And you're going to keep on praying through. Amen? He's going to test you. Are you really believing in me for this? Because what's coming out of your mouth right now, it doesn't sound like it is. So do I need to stop working on your behalf for this? No, God, I'm sorry. Immediately say that. And then decree and declare his word back over that thing. Be slow to speak. If you don't know what to speak, ask him. In the right time, in the right manner. Come on. He will talk to you. Hallelujah. Because that's what kind of father he is. That's what kind of God he is, but that's what kind of father he is. He is our God, but he is our father. And your father loves you. And because he loves you, he will never leave or forsake you. That means he physically won't walk away and he won't turn his back on you. Pretend like you don't exist. Because you're his child. Hallelujah. Jesus. And Pastor, you said uh, when you started talking about Matthew 6 and how Jesus told the disciples to pray, I was like, uh oh, he done tapped into the sermon. <laughs> Jesus was teaching the disciples, thy pray like this. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done yes. Yes. in earth as it is in heaven. Yes. So what do you have to do? You have to decree the things of heaven to be here on earth. Because they already exist. Yes, they already oh, exist man. there. Yes. And he's saying, have faith and speak it to be yes. so. Yes. That is a key. Speak it to be so. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. That's the, that is the Father's will for us. Is to speak those things that he is surrounding himself of. Yes. All the goodness. All the greatness. Yes. And Speak it to be around Bill Nordine. Amen. Come on, put your name right in there. Be around me too. Amen. We are promised children. Yes. We have covenant with him. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise yes. God for the covenant. Amen. Jesus. But you better believe that Satan wants a piece of this action. Yes. He wants a piece of this action and he's going to try to keep us in the dark about our power. He does not want you to know who you are. Because he will entice us to use words for harm instead of hope. Hallelujah. It's not an easy thing to watch the tongue. But Luke tells us, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Can he say that? Yes. Nothing shall be impossible. Yeah, it's difficult sometimes to... Yeah, you gotta bite your tongue. But praise God, you can bite it. Bite it before it wields something very sharp. Wow. Right. Wow. My God. 
So in addition to Proverbs 18, 21, that reminds us that the word, that our words hold power, what does Mark 11 tell you? You have the power to cast entire mountains into the sea. You have the power to wither the fig tree. Because why? Jesus said greater things shall you do. Come on, and we do it in his name, not our own. Come on, let's not get lost. We do it in his name. Praise you, Father. James writes in chapter 3, verse 1 through 12. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. And any man offended not in words shall the same a perfect man. And, uh, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, and they may obey us, that they may obey us. And we turn their entire body by that one little bit in their mouth. Come on. Behold, also the ships, which though they may be so great and are driven by fierce winds, yet they are turned with a small helm. Just a little rudder yes. makes a huge ship. Yes. Go left and go right. That's right. And it says, yet <clears throat> whether or so the governor listeth. So even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. <laughs> Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Wow. And the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body. And set it on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every, every kind of beast, of birds, of serpents, of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed by mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil. Jesus, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men. Come on. Can't do that. Which are made after the similitude of God. How can we do that? Come on. Lord help us. Do with a fountain set forth the same place sweet water and better. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. That's why we must surrender. Remember when y'all sang that song up here? We surrender. We surrender. Mm -hmm. It is so important that we surrender to God yes. everything. That's right. That includes our tongue. Yes. Includes this little thing in our mouth mm -hmm. that can do so much good and so much bad. Yeah. So when we, we surrender ourselves, we have to remember by doing that, we are saying, God, you are Lord and Master over my life master the tongue submitted to the perfect will of God can bring hope hallelujah the master gives great power to us to bless him come on he gives us a tongue and a voice and words to bless him and his kingdom work amen hallelujah and he listens to every word that crosses our mind mm. yeah. and our lips. Yeah. It's not just the spoken words, because you might just be sitting there going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then be like, oh yeah, that's good to see you, good to see you. Yeah. You can't do that. <laughs> you just have to say, I love you, brother, and you gotta mean it, and then just walk away. It's okay. It. Come on, I love you, sister, and just and be blessed. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, you know you're blessed and highly favored of the Lord, right? Come on, share it. If you've got it, give it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every word. Hallelujah. So, Jesus. Hmm. We are made in the likeness of the Father and His Son and His Spirit. Right? The Trinity. If you're made in God's likeness, you're made in Jesus' likeness, yeah. and you're made in the Holy Spirit's likeness because they're one. Right. And they all exist in us. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. <clears throat> so the same dis power that is displayed by the Father and by Jesus and by Holy Spirit 
exist in each and one of us. His power in us. Come on. Even the words that were prepared for the sermon came to me from the Father. And even the ones that aren't written down that he's having me say come from him. Because I can do nothing standing here without him. I don't want to do anything standing here without him. I don't ever want to be there. Jesus. What we speak, what we choose to speak must be carefully chosen. And we have to bring blessing. Not, not cursing. Hallelujah. So I'm going to end my part with this right here. Fill your mind and your heart with the word of God and allow him to have complete control over your life. Be slow to speak. And when you do allow those words to go forth with the power that God intended them to have. Allow those words to have a purpose when you speak them. God's purpose. Hallelujah. Because God intended us to, to walk in and speak his blessings. Yes. 